Well, hey everyone, and welcome back. I wanted to make this video as a brief continuation of some of the topics we talked about in the last video, which was all about faults. So in this video, I want to cover what types of faults you'll see at our three types of plate boundaries. So a brief review, plate boundaries, which are where Earth's tectonic plates, you'll see them interacting. We've uh, got convergent, divergent, and transform boundaries, right? Convergent, as the name may imply, these are where two plates come together, and as a result, you'll usually either see um, mountains, if it's two continental plates, you'll see uh, land forced up when they push together. If it's a continental and an oceanic plate, then the oceanic plate, since it's more dense, will actually sink beneath the continental plate and we'll have what's called a subduction zone which is usually marked by volcanoes on a nearby coastline. And finally, if it's two oceanic plates interacting, then we'll have trenches. So those are convergent plate boundaries in a nutshell. Divergent, as the name once again implies, it's pretty simple. They push away from each other, or maybe it's more like they're being pulled away. They're, either way, they're being separated. And these are most famous for mid-ocean ridges, where sea floor spreading occurs, and you'll have uh, pieces of the ocean floor pulling apart and new magma coming in and filling up in its place. And finally we have transform, where two plates slide past each other. Or it's more like they're scraping against each other really, because uh, plate motion is never, <laughs> never quite so clean. And these aren't usually marked by any notable landforms, but Generally, these have the highest amount of earthquakes, um, but do be aware that earthquakes can occur at any plate boundaries. Okay, so those are the three types of plate boundaries in a nutshell. Now let's get on to talking about faulting as it pertains to these three types of boundaries. So we'll start with transform since it's, uh, it's the simplest to think about. Um, if you're familiar with faulting, if you watched my previous video, then since at transform boundaries we have two uh, plates scraping against each other, moving horizontally, that may sound pretty familiar, and it should sound like a strike slip fault, either left or right lateral. Because if you think about it as two plates scraping past each other, then almost all of the motion you're going to have is going to be horizontal. You're not going to see much surface being pushed upwards or downwards. Obviously, if you have an oblique slip fault, which do exist, um, then, then you will see some of that. But primarily, at transform, you're going to see strike slip faults, whether they be right or left lateral. Now, convergent and divergent boundaries are a bit different because each of them have vertical motion involved. So they're either going to be normal or reverse, right? You could say they're just dip slip, but if you want to be more exact, then you have to look at it this way. So if we've just got a block, right? Say that's a block of earth. There's a fault here, and it's at a plate boundary. Now, we can either have the foot wall right here being upthrown, moving upwards, and by that logic, the 
hanging wall is going to move downwards relative to where it was, or if it's a reverse fault, we can have the foot wall moving down relative to where it was at first, and then the hanging wall moving upwards. Now, the way I like to think about this is look at these arrows. Just create little uh, directional arrows, uh, either in your mind or draw them out. And think of them as direction vectors, right? So on this side, on the left side the, of the foot wall here, we have this arrow, which is moving diagonally to the left, upwards to the left. On this side, we've got one that's moving diagonally downward to the right. And keep in mind, this is a normal fault shown here. And when we look at these two directional vectors, this one is to the left of this one. Keep in mind their position. Um, and we can say, well, if we take a look at solely the horizontal uh, factors, if you, once again, we're, we're getting into a bit of vector stuff here, but if you want to look at this uh, on a coordinate plane, imagine these arrows on a coordinate plane. If you look at just the horizontal piece of these vectors, then this one is moving in this direction and this one is moving in this direction, to the left. Now draw it again with just these horizontal components, and you'll see it looks something like this. And what does that show? The two plates are moving away from each other. So henceforth, at a divergent plate boundary, we have normal faults. Hopefully that makes sense. And finally, you can see where this is going, but since divergent is normal, convergent should be the reverse. But if we do the same process here, if we look at the one on the left, it's moving downwards and to the right. So it's moving in this direction, to the right, the horizontal component. And this one is moving upwards and to the left, so the horizontal component is just straight to the left. And if we draw these together, maybe on the blocks here, you'll see that they are in fact coming together. So, convergent plate boundaries are the homes of reverse faults. And that's all I really wanted to talk about in this video. Hopefully that made sense. Um, I'm trying to make these shorter, make them a bit more digestible. But either way, hopefully it was some good information, either that or some good review. And I'll see you guys in the next video.